In this presentation, we will continue on with our comprehensive partnership problem. We are now going to be doing the closing entries, the first entry of the four-step closing process. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. First note where we are at, we're in the closing entries tab. We last time left off from the financial statements. Let's do a quick recap of where we are, what we've done, and get to this point. We've done the journal entries, although I'm, all, I'm over here on the journal entries tab. We've done all the journal entries, that being the day-to-day -day types of transactions. We've posted those journal entries to the general ledger. We've created from the general ledger a trial balance. We call that trial balance, just like any trial balance, just a trial balance, until we go to the adjusting process, where we take this trial balance in the adjusting process, going to the second tab, the adjusting entries tab, and then we just rename it, call it the unadjusted trial balance, so that we can put those timing things in there, those timing entries, those timing uh, transactions. They're not really transact. They're going to be entries in order to adjust things more to a more proper accrual uh, basis. And once we've done that, we're on the adjusted trial balance. These are the numbers that we use. These are, these are really our final numbers for this time period, the end of the month, the end of January. That's what we use to go into the financial statement tab to create the financial statements. So we still have this adjusted entries tab or the adjusted trial balance. And now we're just going to take this adjusted trial balance and close out this number. So it's the same numbers here. We're taking this adjusted trial balance, going to the closing entries tab now, and we're going to close out the temporary accounts in a similar worksheet as we did for the adjustments meaning we'll start this time with the adjusting uh, entries the adjusted trial balance and then we'll put our our adjustments which are our close which this probably should be closing entries we're going to put our adjustments which are going to be the closing entries this time to get the closed trial balance or the post closed trial balance and again these names are just really just kind of they're all trial balances. They're just a trial balance of when we print the trial balance. And they'll have certain characteristics just by the nature of where they happen to be generated in terms of what area of the accounting cycle. Uh, also note that uh, different software will account for the closing process differently, but we need to know it even if we don't manually input the closing process so that we can understand what will happen when we run reports for different time periods. Because uh, sometimes if we if we're using different software the income statement will disappear or <laughs> we'll go to if we run a, point, a report for February these numbers just go away magically but we're still in balance how can that be so <laughs> and, we're, and the only way to really know what happens no matter what software we're doing is to understand the closing process we're gonna do this with a four-step closing process because that's traditionally how it is done in a, a textbook we could do this with all just one journal entry, just note, and you might want to be able to think about that just to get, because that gives you a quick idea of if you were to print gener different reports in a, in a accounting system to just have an idea of, well, this whole thing rolls over to, to the capital accounts. So our end goal is to close out all these accounts, these temporary accounts, including the entire income statement, make it zero, and then these temporary accounts, the draws, and roll those into their respective capital accounts for the owners. And then these accounts will all be zero. That's the end goal. So when you when you think about financial statements rolling from period to period, from month to month, from year to year, then that's what you really want to understand. You want to say, hmm, why did they, well, how, how did this thing happen? What differed? Well, the balance sheet accounts are all still there. They didn't go away. The income statement accounts are going to start over from zero to whatever time period we run a report to, depending on the software we're using. To get an understanding of that and to do it in practice, depending on the software we're using, we'll do the closing process here in a manual four-step process. So remember that the, the reason we're doing this is that the, these accounts are timing accounts on the income statement. So they only make sense if we say this happened for the month of this time period. Just like it only makes sense if we're driving a car and trying to see how many miles we went to start from zero. If we say we, we went this so many miles, we have to have a time frame. We went this many miles a day, this many miles in a week. So in order to do that, we have to start at zero and count up to count how many miles. Same thing here. We got And so if we start a new month and we want to count up from zero, we have to start at zero. We can't start here. 
So that's what we're, we're doing here. We're just closing this out and uh, we'll end up with the post-closing trial balance. So our four step process is gonna start with step one, which is the, we'll just go over them first, close out revenue to this new account income summary. And we'll talk about more about what that is in a second. And then we'll close out all the expenses to the income step summary. Step two, we'll do next time. Step three, close out income summary to the capital accounts. And then step four, close out draws to the capital accounts. And after step four, we'll be at uh, zeros here. And all the temporary accounts and the capital accounts will have the balance. Now, why use this income summary? Where did this come from? This like magically appeared, this income summary. It wasn't there, and I don't think it was there before. So that, that's gonna be a clearing account that we just use in this uh, closing entry. You can call it a temporary account, but it's really more temporary. It's like, it's a clearing account. It's like super temporary. It's only, it's only there during the closing process. It's zero before the closing process. It's zero after the closing process, as opposed to other, you know, temporary accounts that are hang around a bit longer in terms of they'll be here all month or all year on the income statement. So the, why do we have it? Note the end goal, we don't need it to do the closing process. We could just close out the entire income statement to the partner accounts. But particularly with a partnership, uh, it's kind of useful to have the income summary because it gives us a check figure to see what's in there before we close out to the capital accounts. In other words, once we close out revenue and expenses to the income summary, we'll have net income in the income summary. And that'll give us a check that these have been closed out correctly. And that'll also give us the net income that we need to break out then in accordance with the profit sharing agreement to uh, the capital accounts. Also note that as we go, this process mirrors very closely. I'll go to the financial statements. What we do on the statement of partners equity, starting with the beginning capital accounts and then investments. This is where we're starting now closing out net income and draws, ending up with the ending capital accounts. We should end up here in the post-closing trial balance. Okay, back to the closing entries. We'll do step one. We're gonna make this account zero. This has a credit balance. We're gonna do the opposite thing to it to make it to go down. So I'm gonna copy revenue and expenses, right click and copy. Uh, all of the journal entries are gonna be as of the end of the month, in this case, January 31st. We'll put this on the top because remember, this is a credit here. We want to do the opposite thing to it, a debit, to make it go down. So I'm going to put it on top, right click and paste, one, two, three. Now the amount is going to be this amount, 29,000. So it's going to be the debit, 29,000. There's only one revenue account, so we don't have any other accounts we need to deal with. This is going to be a short journal entry. We're just going to credit something though, because we need an equal debit and credit. I'm going to do that with our negative of this number formula you could just put in a negative 29,000 but formulas are nice and therefore I use them whenever possible and then we're going to go to the income summary that's where it's going to go we're just going to move it up to the income summary so we'll right click and copy that we're going to put that on the bottom here this is going to be in cell b6 right click and paste one two three then we will indent that going from the home tab alignment increase indenting there we have it. That's all we need. Let's post it and see if it does what we think it should do. What do we think it should do? We think that this revenue account should go down to zero. And then the difference is going to go here to the income summary. We're just basically moving that 29,000 credit up from revenue to the income summary. So we're going to say equals in H24. Scroll up just a bit. And we want to pick up that 29,000. Once we hit enter, it's going to bring this down, put us out of balance. So there we have that. We're going to move it up to H23. So we're going to post this side now, income summary. We posted this. We're going to post this to the middle column, income summary in H23 equals, pointing to the income summary. That's going to bring this up from zero in the credit direction to 29,000. So there we have that. We've, we've achieved our goal of making this zero, and we're putting the difference in here. Next time, we're going to close out all the expenses, make them zero, put the difference in there, the difference or the outcome or the amount then in the income summary will then be or hopefully should be net income. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info.